Hello, this is Angela doing my interpretation on the Shakespearean sonnet number 23. I'm going to recite this sonnet out loud and then I'm going to review it line by line and share with you my interpretation and I will also be uh, doing a brief summary at the end as well. All right, here we go. This is Shakespearean sonnet number 23. As an unperfect actor on the stage, who with his fear is put beside his part, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage, whose strength abundance weakens his own heart. So I, for fear of trust, forget to say that perfect ceremony of love's right, and in mine own love strength seem to decay, overcharged with burden of mine own love's might. Oh, let my books be then the eloquence and dumb presagers of my speaking breast, who plead for love and look for recompense, more than that tongue that more hath more expressed. Oh, learn to read what silent love hath writ, to hear with eyes belongs to love's fine wit. All right, so line number one and two says, as an unperfect actor on the stage, who with his fear is put beside his part. Here the speaker is honest. He fully understands his own shortcomings by comparing himself to an unperfect actor. And stage fright leads to being tongue-tied and he therefore forgets his lines. Lines two, uh, the next two lines say, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage, whose strength abundance weakens his own heart. Here that some thing, animal or person, is completely jam packed full of rage and they are about to explode. And all this rage and strength makes the speaker weak because this rage and strength is not directed towards a clear direction. The next two lines say, So I, for fear of trust, forget to say the perfect ceremony of love's right. Here the speaker's lack of confidence in himself keeps him from remembering his lines and he forgets to say the perfect thing that lovers say to their love. The next two lines say, And in mine own love's strength seem to decay, overcharged with burden of mine own love's might. Here the love's strong points begin to fail because they are weighed down by the immense and all-consuming passion of that very love. The next two lines say, O oh, let my books be then the eloquence and dumb presagers of my speaking breast. Here the author lets his words on the pages speak oh so well, and they silently speak aloud the words of his heart. The next two lines are, Who plead for love and look for recompense, more than that tongue that more hath more expressed. Here his words and his heart long for love more than the eloquent speaker could speak or say. The next two lines are, O oh, learn to read what silent love hath writ, to hear with eyes belongs to love's fine wit. Here the speaker is addressing the audience and is asking them to learn to read of his silent love in the pages that he has written. And he also says to read through the lines and hear of love's intelligence. This sonnet is written to the beloved of the author. The purpose of the sonnet is, is to express the inexpressible. This poem pleads the passionate love that overrides human reasoning and overtakes the senses. You see, the speaker is compared to an unperfect actor, actor on stage who is unable to remember his lines. 
because he is consumed by love. Yet this unperfect actor indeed communicates a powerful message of the very thing that changes everything. And that is love in its fullness. All right, thank you for watching my interpretation on Shakespearean Sonnet number 23. I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.